Well, good afternoon and welcome to H360 Live. My name is Dave Duplay and I'm joined here in the studio this afternoon by my friend and colleague, Miss Cortland Long. Well, Cortland, it's so good to see you. Good to see you, Dave. How are you? I'm doing great. How was your long weekend? It was really nice. How was yours? Mine was fantastic. I took a drive up to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I watched the Pitt Panthers play Villanova. Great game. I want to shout out to James Conner, number 24, running back. Great, great individual. He plays for the Pitt Panthers. He was diagnosed a year ago with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now cancer-free, two touchdowns, way to go, way to go, Panthers. Good shout-out. That's an incredible story. Yeah. Well, we've got a great show today. Lorraine Egan from the uh, Damon Runyon Cancer Research Foundation is going to be with us today. And, you know, they're a great organization founded in 1946 and doing some incredible work backing some very young, brilliant minds all in the spirit of finding a cure for the hideous disease of cancer. And I can't wait to get into that discussion. They are doing such phenomenal work over there. I know it's going to be really incredible. Lorraine, thank you so much for joining us here today on H360 Live. Um, we have had the opportunity to speak with you. We met you at ASCO, and so we know quite a bit about Damon Runyon. Um, before our members who maybe don't know quite so much, can you share with us a little bit of the history and mission of the Damon Runyon Cancer Research Foundation? Sure. We're coming up on our 70th anniversary this year, which is very exciting. We were founded in 1946, as Dave said, by the famous radio personality Walter Winchell, who probably many people are too young to remember, but he was the most listened to radio personality in the first half of the 20th century. And when his good friend Damon Runyon died, he went on to his program and asked all of America to support cancer research. And for those of you who don't know, Damon Runyon wrote the stories that Guys and Dolls is based on and was also himself a very famous journalist of his day. So for the past 70 years, we are um, living the legacy of Walter Winchell getting on the radio in 1946. So, Lorraine, your website says that you look for young talent with bold ideas. Tell us a little bit about that, and um, specifically the, the young. I mean, you're, you're really targeting the young researcher or professional that's got an idea and that glimmer in their eye. And so tell us a little bit about that process of selection. Sure. So um, ever since the beginning of our organization, we've focused on the young scientist. And... You know, the reason for that is that that's where the new ideas and the new blood comes from in all aspects of life. If we think about now in the technology space, certainly, you know, the Bill Gateses and the Steve Jobses of the world made their big breakthroughs when they were very young in their 20s. And the same is true in biomedical research that it's really important to constantly have the new young people who see things differently, think nothing is impossible, have this audacity to just be able to see something that could be different. So we think it's incredibly important to fund early career scientists and give them the ability to test their new ideas rather than just funding the same old, same old ideas over and over again. Yeah, you know, if my daughter were sitting here, she'd definitely agree with you because <laughs> every time I have an issue with the remote control, on the TV or my cell phone, she is, you know, just a call away and she walks me through it. So it definitely <laughs> a young person's game. Well, you think about, yeah, just the use of technology and the ability to share information. You know, we've evolved from scientists working in little silos in their lab now to these communities of scientists that work together. And that's the young generation that's going to be really facile with doing that kind of work. And we want to promote that kind of energy, the kind of new thinking and, um, you know, we always talk about as another example, um, Albert Einstein, you know, people remember him with his crazy hair and, you know, looking really old. But in fact, he was he was 26 when he published his theory of relativity. So, you know, we really want to inspire that new generation to be able to think that way and have the resources to do that. Yeah. So thinking of scientists and silos and then moving toward more of a community leads me really well into my next question. And that's you know, cancer has so many different forms, so many different types and stages. Does Damon Runyon focus on any specific kind of cancer or is it across all different types? We focus on all types of cancer, but even more importantly than that, we do a lot of basic laboratory research trying to understand what causes cancers to begin with. 
you know, there are many different types of cancers and they're going to be caused different ways, but there are certain fundamental things that happen in all cancers. It's cells that somehow figure out how to grow out of control and spread to other organs. You know, for example, metastasis is probably the most deadly thing that happens in cancer. And mm -hmm. so what is it that enables a cell that stays in one part of your body all your life suddenly decides that it's going to get up and go somewhere else? And how does it do that? And how does it get into the bloodstream and get out of it? So we, we focus a lot of our research on underlying issues that are common to many forms of cancer and just asking the questions of how could this happen and what are some different ways that we could stop it for individual types of cancers or maybe for all cancers. Maybe we can find one or more Achilles heels for all forms of cancer. Yeah, you know, in August, New York Times did a series on immunotherapy and a number of your young researchers were featured um, in that piece, which was really great. Um, you know, and I, I think it's so important for this science to get out you know, new technologies, immunotherapies coming to the market, and these scientists and, you know, young professionals working so hard. Do you think science and where we're going with finding a cure for cancer is heading in the right direction? Absolutely. You know, um, when I joined Damon Runyon 16 years ago, scientists were cautious and guarded in what the way they talked about cancer. It was just when the human genome had been deciphered and it was really the beginning this, of this new age. Um, and over the past 16 years, the conversation is totally different. So even the most cautious of scientists who tend to be conservative in how they talk about things, um, they really see the breakthroughs around the corner, you know, that we've made some already. And, you know, it's easy to forget how much progress we've made already. But with the science the way it's going right now and the acceleration of progress, I think that the entire community feels incredibly optimistic that in our lifetimes or certainly in our children's lifetime, cancer is going to move from, you know, a horrifying diagnosis to something where you say, okay, now I've got to deal with this, you'll be able to deal with it and either control the cancer and live with it for the rest of your life or cure it completely. Well, you know, the, the conversation's just not changing on the medical side. You know, it's changing with patients and caregivers as well, and we see that with our community because, I mean, remember when we were children growing up and somebody in the family was diagnosed with cancer, it was always a discussion in the back room with the adults, right? You never heard the C word mentioned, and it was taboo. You didn't talk about that, and especially, you know, within earshot of the children, um, yeah, and and now it's you know we've taken and I'm and I think it's it's a lot of the work is um, because of organizations like yours the conversation is taken from the back room and now into the front room and we're able to have a conversation and I think leading science and new developments lead to a lot of that conversation. I think that's right. You know, it's interesting you say that because I have a ten-year-old daughter and. Uh, one of our best friends was diagnosed with cancer recently. So the question was, do we tell our daughter? And I was like, of course we tell our daughter. It's mm -hmm. just one of those challenges we go through in life and he's gonna treat it and hopefully he'll be okay, but we wanna be open about it. And so I think we live in a different world. Yeah. yeah. This is a mindset that we hear all the time from our patients and caregivers who share their story on Healthy O360, but also come on H360 Live that Yes, they were diagnosed with cancer, but they came into that fight with, you know, this is just something that I have to deal with and I'm not gonna let it take over my life. I'm still going to be a mom, a student, a daughter, you know, everything, every role that you need to be throughout life. Um, I'd like to learn a little more about the selection process though that happens at Damon Runyon. How do you identify, how do you figure out who is the best of the best, the new emerging talent, you know, how do they come into your scope? So in some ways you can think about it the same way someone would apply to Harvard or Stanford or one of the elite institutions. We have very prestigious awards. So if you're a young biomedical researcher um, or cancer researcher, you want a Damon Runyon Award. It's a really prestigious thing to help your career and give you funding. So we receive applications from all across the country, hundreds of applications every year for our awards. And what we do is we um, have a community of senior scientists who are the kinds of people that we want our young scientists to evolve into. So we ask the leading senior scientists in the country 
to vet these proposals, review them with us, and they even come to New York and sit around the table and debate the merits of the different proposals in an effort to identify who they think are going to be the next breakthrough scientists. So it's the leaders of today picking the leaders of tomorrow. So you, you, I would imagine you get proposals or applications from around the world. And so you, it's interesting that you say now some, some of the more senior researchers and scientists are looking at the proposals of the young scientists. I, I would love to be a fly on the wall in some of those discussions where it's like the light bulb goes on and many of them and they, oh, well, this is really interesting. I mean, is that kind of how it goes and is there a lot of debate around this? Yeah, there's definitely debate. Um, and in many ways, the more the debate, the more I want to fund somebody because <laughs> if I have one scientist saying, you know, this proposal will never work and another one saying, I think this could be the answer, that's, that's exactly the kind of risky project we want to fund because we're not afraid of failure. Science is really hard and most experiments don't work. And um, you have to hit for the fences. So our view is we want to take people who've already demonstrated that they can do really cool work through the work that they've done already, and then they're, they're you know, taking the flyer at the next big thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in addition to providing you know, monetary awards to scientists, what other sorts of opportunities or freedoms does a Damon Runyon uh, scholarship or award afford to a researcher. I imagine it opens many doors for someone. Yeah, it really does. You know, a lot of our scientists say that it's not really about the money, although they need the money, but um, it's first of all prestige. So it's like getting a Rhodes scholarship or something like that. It just changes um, what your resume looks like. And mm -hmm. um, it's an endorsement that's really important because the most senior scientists have said, this is somebody we should place our bet on. We also create a community for our researchers through different kinds of symposia and retreats where they have the opportunity to share what they're doing and talk to people from very different fields. So it gives you the opportunity to have somebody who's new to something say, have you thought about it this way? And so that really adds a tremendous value and a number of collaborations have come out of these different meetings that we have. And our scientists often, you know, they're young, they, um, they talk about the fact that it really feels like a family to them, that once you're a Damon Runyon scientist, you're a Damon Runyon scientist for the rest of your careers. You know, we always remind them we're going to take credit for every single thing that they do for the rest of their lives, including their children. You know, we take credit for everything. So, um, so it's a really strong community. So every year you have um, a, a fun run, a fundraiser, and it's a run at Yankee Stadium, and I believe this year was the eighth annual. Um, run and you raised a lot of money to support these young researchers but Dr. Tommy Verbuchen I believe is his name comes back participates in the run not only does he participate in the run but he's one of the top fundraisers and so tell me a little bit about Dr. Tommy he must be a number one a, a brilliant man but they keep coming back and, and giving, and it's so amazing the loyalty that you're building in these physicians, these researchers. Yeah, you know, so he has an interesting story because after he received a Damon Runyon Award at Harvard University, so we're funding his, his research there, he also received a diagnosis of cancer himself. So, um, and he's, you know, in his 20s, I think. Um, and so he was facing that battle and has, you know, finished his treatments and is doing really well. But, you know, so that's really hit home for him in a different way, how important the work is that he does. And he recognizes that Damon Runyon plays such a vital role in inspiring young, brilliant people to go into the research that he became a fundraiser for us. And I think he raised over $10,000 for, you know, for Damon wow. Runyon. So, wow. uh, you know, it is always particularly um, hard and ironic when one of our researchers also faces cancer, but they do just like everyone else does. Yeah, now do you remember what the cornerstone of his research was? What was he particularly working on at Harvard? Um, what is he working on? I know that he's a chemist, and I think he's trying to create new kind of chemical molecules that would interact against cancer cells. Wow. 
Well, he's going to be on the show in a couple of weeks. Oh, so. great. Oh, All fantastic. Right. Well, let him tell you. <laughs> yeah. right. He'll do better than me. We don't want to know. steal the show in yeah. a couple of weeks. <laughs> All right. Well, Dr. Tommy, we're definitely looking forward to you being in the studio and hearing all about your amazing story. Absolutely. Um, I know that another way Damon Runyon raises money is through this incredible and historic partnership you have with Broadway theaters. And just through sales of Hamilton tickets, you guys have raised about $250,000. So if I understand it correctly, Broadway donates tickets to every performance of every show to Damon Runyon. You guys are able to sell them at a premium to raise that money for cancer research? Yeah, yeah. Um, a little correction, they don't donate the tickets, we actually pay them oh, for okay. them, but what they do is they set aside mm -hmm. the best house seats for us, and have been since the 1950s. This is a partnership that goes back to Rogers and Hammerstein and Leland Hayward, supposedly, who developed this partnership with Broadway, and the theaters have been an incredible partner for us. They are, you know, so fantastic. So what they do is, um, for virtually every show, we get four to six tickets and we sell them usually for double the ticket price and half of the amount goes to pay for the tickets and the other half is a tax deductible donation to Damon Runyon. So you get the same quality tickets you'd get, especially if you were going to a broker, where you often are cheaper than brokers mm -hmm. um, with the tax deduction and the fact that it's to support cancer research. So it's been a tremendous partnership. And uh, so if you go on our website, you can uh, link to um, there's a telephone number to call to reserve tickets, and we do have Hamilton tickets, although they sell out almost immediately. So don't get excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so look, you're looking for the angle. I know. Yeah, I've been entering that lottery every day. <laughs> no. huh. Well, you know, Broadway is not the only connection you have to celebrities, because if if I'm not mistaken, Marilyn Monroe, Joe DiMaggio have all been in some way part of the Damon Runyon Cancer Research Foundation and you know cancer doesn't discriminate right I mean it just doesn't you could be rich and poor or you know uh, whatever your background and and cancer is an equal opportunity condition that affects everybody and do you think that that t tell me a little about these folks gravitating towards the Damon Runyon Cancer Research Foundation well, historically, we had, as you said, a, a huge cadre of um, celebrity personalities because Walter Winchell was a famous gossip journalist, and he wrote about all these people. So uh, they were always trying to be on his good side so that he would write nice things about them. But seriously, you know, Joe DiMaggio, Bob Hope, um, you know, I have pictures of all these incredible celebrities from the mid 20th century who were all very involved in the organization. Um, over the years, we've evolved to be less of a celebrity organization and more about the science and the research. And when I think about who our celebrities are now, they're the donors that support us. And they, you know, are from the, you know, wealthiest of the wealthy to people who give us $5 a year, you know. And um, they are truly Mr. and Mrs. America, like Walter Winchell reached out to. And, um, and the true celebrities also for us are our scientists. I mm -hmm. mean, we think that they are the rock stars of, you know, this generation. And, uh, you know, when you think about the Neil Armstrongs and all of the world that were going off to the moon, this is our moonshot, as Joe Biden has said. And um, these are the celebrities that are going to get us there. Yeah. So bringing it back to the science, in addition to the laboratory research, does Damon Runyon also fund translational and clinical research to bring these patients, to bring these breakthroughs directly to patients? Sure, you know, that's really important. So we talk about the full continuum of cancer research, starting from the most basic, you know, understanding DNA, you know, and moving all the way to clinical trials that are trying to accelerate getting the um, new science to patients as rapidly as possible. And, um, that's an important focus for us. And as a matter of fact, there are fewer and fewer physicians who are going into research and focusing on being that incredibly important link between the laboratory and the patients. So we have special programs at Damon Runyon that focus on recruiting and retaining physician scientists in cancer research so that they, it's, you know, it's in a way it's like a football pass. Somebody's got to, you know, pass it off to a physician. Without physicians who really understand the science, you can't get drugs approved and into patients. So that's something that's been very, very important to us. And 
many of the most important new cancer therapies that have de been developed have Damon Runyon scientists who've been front and center in that work. So, for example, with the immunotherapies that are going on now, we have a, one of the scientists who's most prominent in immunotherapy research now was a Damon Runyon clinical investigator who we funded at a time where it was really a question of whether he'd be able to stay in research and have the funding to do his research, and now he's one of the rock stars I was talking about. Yeah. Let's go back to 1946. Damon Runyon is founded. You, you're, you get going. You're starting to... Yeah, I wasn't there then. You know, I, I know you weren't there then. <laughs> I, no, I'm not suggesting that. Foot and mouth. Right? Yeah, I'm um, kidding. So there must be some memorable milestones or achievements that in cancer research along the journey from 1946 up to today immunotherapy is one that you mentioned but you know are there some other things that really stand out that you know when you look back and you, you say you know what this is the organization that I'm part of that had the the foresight if you will the the wherewithal to make it happen. What were some of those really key milestones? If well, you think of a few. You know, we've if we think about the progression that's been made in cancer research and all the understanding that's happened in cancer research um, during that 70-year period, we have been front and center in all of it. Um, and it goes back even to the 1950s when we talk about Damon Runyon scientists who demonstrated that cigarettes in fact cause cancer or were the first to cure a solid tumor with chemotherapy way back when. And then moving forward and understanding um, what the causes are of cancer. You know, we now understand that cancer is basically mutations in our genes that cause our cells to go haywire basically. And just that understanding that there can be genetic changes that cause cancer. Damon Runyon scientists were very involved in that. And then when you talk about some of the new treatments that are going on, for example, now you know you talk about targeted therapies. So the whole notion is, you know, because if you think about what are the two most important areas of focus right now in, in cancer research, um, it's one, can we figure out exactly what's going on in these cells and be able to target those errors that are going on so that instead of blasting people with systemic chemotherapy that affects your hair and your stomach and all these other places, can you really be targeted? Uh, that science, Damon Runyon, has been very involved in uh, the leadership of people in the cancer genome atlas and things like that. And then the immunotherapy side is the other piece that's so hot today. So. All along the entire continuum, our scientists have been very much front and center in those kinds of discoveries. Or you think about, you know, if you think about one of the biggest breakthroughs, and nobody talks about it, is um, the cancer vaccine for the human papilloma virus, right? right? So we're going to eliminate ovarian cancer and many head and neck cancers um, within a generation if everybody gets vaccinated. And Damon Runyon scientists were very involved in the science behind understanding that human papilloma virus causes these cancers um, and being able to develop a vaccine against it. That is huge. And, uh, you know, for all of the people watching now, you must have your sons and daughters vaccinated against the HPV virus and it will prevent a cancer. I mean, yeah. that's huge. Absolutely. So, you know, um, and then of course we always look at um, the accolades our scientists get, most notably, 12 of our scientists have received the Nobel Prize, which for an organization of our size is a phenomenal track record. So that mm -hmm. kind of recognition shows that we're funding superstars. Yeah. Absolutely. At the risk of asking you to play favorites, can you maybe think about some of the um, applications or breakthroughs that have come across the selection table uh, this past year? This past year. Um, let's see. Well, it's just been Again, it's, I sound like I'm a broken wheel, but the, the ideas that are coming forward in immunotherapy and really trying to understand why it currently works in some patients. You know, we're seeing patients, and for those of you who don't know, it's uh, how do we harness our immune system to understand that cancer cells, while they started out being our good cells, evolved into being the enemy. So how do we get the immune system to, to understand that and see those cells and attack them? 
and um, there have been some real good breakthroughs in melanoma, but still many people don't respond to those treatments. So it's back to the lab to understand why are those cells not understanding and how can we know who's going to respond and not respond. So that's some of the really exciting work that we're focusing on right now. But you know, it's in so many different areas. Um, biomarker research. Can we see, we're beginning to understand and the technology is evolving so that you can see um, hints of cancer in blood and urine and saliva so that we'll be able to diagnose cancers before they become symptomatic, you know, and that's the key. If you can get cancers early, you can do something about them. It's when it's too late. So, so biomarker research is really exciting to me. And then there's the whole CRISPR technology that our scientists have been very front and center on, and that's um, editing the genome. Can you actually, with certain types of cancers, there are one or two genetic mutations that are causing the cancers to happen. Can you actually go in and edit someone's genome in their cells and turn off the genes that aren't working and put in the genes that could help? So there's so much exciting research now. I, uh, you know, I don't like to place bets on where the breakthroughs are going to happen because I see it happening all over the place and it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. So you also form partnerships and, and one that I'm interested in hearing a little more about is the William Ravis Charitable Fund. Um, I believe you have a couple of coming upcoming events with them, some walks and some runs um, to raise money. How did, how did this partnership uh, get started and evolve? Um, yeah, the William Ravis um, real estate organization has been a phenomenal partner with us and it started with William Ravis himself. He's, um, he owns a, um, a, a real estate company that spans from, you know, New England all the way down to the New York region um, and it's highly successful and he came to one of our events um, just like the breakfast that you went to years ago and heard our story and said, this is really great. I need to help you get the word out more because not enough people know about your organization. So his, uh, or his entire organization took us on. They do an event for us now. They're, they're um, ride walks, they call them. So you can bike ride or walk and they're doing one in Hyannis and Massachusetts in early October and then another one in the... Um, Connecticut region on the coast, um, Nor Norwalk, um, for another one, and they engage their entire community and um, their circle of people that are involved with them. And last year they raised over $500,000 to support our organization, and they're hoping to raise even more this year. So they have just been a tremendous partner. Yeah, awesome. So people love to talk about where the money goes when they donate to an organization and Damon Runyon I think has one of the most incredible models. Am I understanding this correct that 100% of the donations actually go to the research and not to overhead? That's Can right. you tell us how, how is that possible? How does that happen? Sure. So that's a commitment that the organization made right back at its founding because people want to know that their money is going to the research. So we fund our overhead from our Broadway ticket service mm -hmm. and also from an endowment that we have that's grown over the years thanks to being around for so long and having some generous donors that have supported that. So um, we cover our very modest overhead from those sources so that whenever anyone gives a donation to Damon Runyon, 100% goes to the research. Okay, well. well, Lorraine, I, I would love to apply to do some research, but I think age is holding me back, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. Right? You, you're laughing. Corwin <laughs> yeah, is laughing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, but I am a fan uh, of your organization and really appreciate uh, what you do because I've had several family members um, lose their battle to cancer and I have family members who also are survivors. And so I want to thank you for the research that uh, you fund because without that it wouldn't be possible. Right to have so many survivors and, and I, I believe a cure for cancer, um, hopefully in our lifetime. But for those watching at home that want to donate, where can we go to, to make a donation? Sure, so it's the Damon Runyon Cancer Research Foundation and our website is www.damonrunyon.org. So if you go there, it, there's a, a donation section that can explain all the different ways that people can give. They can 
come to one of the Ravis events, which are really fun if you live in Connecticut or Massachusetts, or um, buy some Broadway tickets or just donate, that would be great. Yep, absolutely, and we have a page uh, on Healthy O360 highlighting the work that you and your organization do. So if you can't find it on the internet, come to Healthy O360, look in the resource section and you'll find Damon Runyon Cancer Research Foundation information listed there as well. Well, Lorraine, thank you for coming in. I really appreciate your time. I want to thank you for tuning in and I'd like to thank our sponsors for making this all possible. Remember, all of our episodes can be viewed on demand at HealthyO360.com and our podcast can always be found in the iTunes store. Well, we love social media and we're all over Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest using the hashtag RealStories. When posting, and we'd greatly appreciate it if you would do the same. On behalf of Dave Duplay, myself, and the entire Healthy 360 family, we'd like to thank you again for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you again next week when we're highlighting schizophrenia.